Hello students, we are discussing GDM in pregnancy and I always emphasize when I am taking up your classes that these are postgraduate level classes. So very simple questions like etiology of uh, diabetes, pathogenesis of diabetes, they are expected at a UG level. I'll, I have tried to incorporate these questions as well in the Viva because they would nevertheless, they can be asked to you but that does not mean that your Viva will be hovering around those points. Your Viva is at the level of postgraduate uh, graduate level so mostly questions like how will you manage this pregnancy how will you follow up this pa uh, patient what is the time of delivery how will you proceed forward with the delivery any uh, precautions during uh, labor how will you manage her intrapartum how will you manage her postpartum what complications are you anticipating postpartum what is the contraception of these kind of questions are more expected of you and more uh, um, uh, expected to be asked in the exam by you and these are the questions which we want to hear from a postgraduate. So questions like definitions and you know um, specifically etiology, pathology, complications, they are of yesteryears and other time in the sense that uh, that's at the level of undergraduate level. So you should know but you should be more prepared for the question that I am putting forward right in front of you because that is what is expected of you in the exam at the level of postgraduate. So let's proceed with our case discussion part 3. Uh, now we are on personal history. Patient consumes a mixed diet and based on a 24 hour recall method she is consuming around 2100 kilocalories in 24 hours uh, which is a protein deficient but a fat rich diet. Uh, she gives history of uh, degree, normal appetite, uh, constipation on and off, for okay. which she takes... Okay, doctor, just, just, just hold on a minute. <clears throat> How much calories should she ideally be taking to cut short on calories as part of diabetic management? How will you counsel her for correct diet intake? Which food portions would you like to be increased and by how much? Um, so I'd like to um, counsel her regarding her diet intake that she should take uh, carbohydrates around 50 to 60 percent of her uh, uh, normal diet. Protein intake should be increased uh, to around 20 percent of the of the diet, and uh, fat intake should be increased to around 20 to 25 percent of the diet. Since she is a layman, she will not be able to understand this better. So I'll break it down for her into portions. I'll, I'll tell her to take three major meals and three snacks. These should be having at least a gap of around uh, two to three hours to maybe maximum three to four hours. But uh, at one point in time, she should not have a major bulk meal. She should avoid those meals in which the glycemic index is high, like, uh, you know, simple carbs like cakes, bakery items, uh, you know, pastries or biscuits or junk food or fried food because they are rich in trans fats, which is not good for her uh, dietary consumption. Um, and of course, like uh, all those two foods which have very high uh, glycemic index like soft drinks or cold drinks or fruit juices or Chinese items or, uh, you know, uh, junk food or these bakery, mostly these basic uh, bakery products which are very high in simple carbs. Uh, at the same time, I'll encourage her to take more proteins like um, uh, low fat uh, milk, low fat curd, uh, lean meat legumes increase the intake of legumes and lentils in her diet increase more fiber in her diet because fiber is very good for satiety and very good for uh, uh, decreasing on the calories at the same time increasing the bulk and uh, feeling of fullness in the uh, female body uh, or uh, just in the um, uh, uh, sense of well-being with the fiber at the same time in pregnancy there is a lot of uh, problem of constipation which even my patient was having so fiber is going to help her out a lot so uh, intake of fiber should be increased and for that I'll have to counsel a layman like her in such a way that she should have more of uh, you know fruits and fruit should be taken up with the skin rather than peeling of the skin especially uh, like uh, apple or uh, you know uh, chiku or uh, uh, even if she's taking cucumber she should be increased uh, she should have more intake of salad because that's again a very good source of fiber in her diet and uh, uh, preferably salad uh, amount should be increased uh, when she's taking food so the plate should be divided into four parts one should have curd one should have salad one should have uh, uh, any seasonal vegetable and along with it one should have uh, 
a roti and preferably these uh, or dal lentils and legumes and uh, of course your uh, rice so this is how the patient should be counseled with respect to her uh, diet that she should increase more of uh, you know proteins as compared to Uh, carbs and more complex carbohydrates should be added to her diet complex carbohydrates in the sense that mixed grain uh, chapati a uh, multi grain uh, bread or uh, more of lentils more of legumes and uh, that should be encouraged as far as fats are also concerned trans fats like you know fried items should be decreased from her diet and uh, good fats like you know cooking in olive oil or canola oil these should these should be encouraged rather than you know coconut oil uh, uh, savings or butter or ghee or margarine they should be uh, discouraged from the diet so this is what i'd like to uh, put as her uh, dietary perspective all right doc let's continue so on examination patient is conscious cooperative and well oriented to time place and person she looks overweight but well nourished uh pre pregnancy weight of the patient was uh, 80 kg and her current weight is, weight is uh, 92 kg her height is 156 cm which makes her bmi around 28 and she falls in the category of obese uh, individual uh, all right doctor just 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 a moment what does bmi tell you how is it important in this case bmi is very important because that tells us the uh, status of the female with with very high bmi that means if she's falling in the category of overweight or she's ca- falling in the category of uh, obese or morbid obesity the weight gain uh, allowed is also less uh, uh, they should not be allowed to gain more of weight the calorie intake uh, of the female is also calculated all, on the basis of her bmi pre pregnancy uh, weight and bmi as well why because uh, such females are bound to um, increase their weight uh, dangerously high during pregnancy so even the calorie count per day is reduced um, uh, with respect to their uh, pre pregnancy bmi uh, that helps us calculate uh, the weight gain as well as calorie intake of the female and that is why bmi is important all right doctor that's very enlightening okay let's continue there is no history of any pelar ictus cyanosis clubbing or lymphadenopathy or any penile edema thyroid spine and breast look normal uh, as far as vitals are concerned she is afebrile to touch pulse is around 84 per minutes regular weight rhythm and character bp is around 130 by 80 in right arm in sitting position after 10 minutes of rest respiratory rate is 20 beats per minute uh, her systemic examination cbs s1 and s2 is heard there is no murmur respiratory uh, system there is uh, 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 normal vesicular breath sounds were heard there was no added sound uh, on her per abdomen examination on inspection the abdomen looks uniformly distended umbilicus is central and inverted uh, flanks do not look full a linea nigra is present stri gravidarum is present previous uh, cesarean sections uh, horizontal uh, scar is present and uh, healthy hernial sites they look intact on palpation uh, the fundal height it corresponds to around uh, 34 weeks which is uh, the gestational age at present cephiso fundal height is around 33.6 cm which is again corresponding to the gestational age uh, liker seems adequate uh, fundal grip uh, fundal grip is suggestive of uh, breach uh, lateral pelvic grip are suggestive of right side of limbs and left side of the spine first pelvic grip is suggestive of head second pelvic grip shows that the head is not engaged and it corroborates with the first pelvic grip uh, uh f- uh, the fetal heart sounds are heard in the left spino umbilical line which are around 140 beats per minute uh regular in rate rhythm and character so what's your diagnosis here doctor uh my patient x age 34 years g3p1 l1 a1 booked case with uh, gestational age 35 34 plus 2 weeks with the uh, gdn diagnosed in second trimester with currently uh, ra- raised blood sugars uh, on irregular intake of uh, oral hypoglycemic agents with a single life fetus in cephalic presentation all right so uh, how would you define gdm gdm is defined as uh, uh, any level of glucose intolerance first uh, or deranged sugars first diagnosed in pregnancy okay and how would you like to proceed to manage her can she be managed in opd basis and 
Okay. Can you tell me so, this? So, um, uh, this patient, I would like to, uh, I would like to, since she's a non-compliant patient, she's been coming after two or two months gap. And uh, I'm still fearful of how she's going to proceed if I ask her to follow up in the OPD, whether she would or she would not. So in this case, I would like to admit her uh, um, basically for monitoring her sugars and if needed titrating the um, uh, dose of uh, oral hypoglycemic agent vis-a-vis -vis, uh, insulin. And uh, since she was a non-compliant patient, there is a possibility that she will also be non-compliant with insulin. So it's very important that we see whether she is uh, being controlled on insulin or not. And if there is a need of insulin or not, so I would like to admit this patient. For her, I would not say that uh, follow-up in OPD is a very good option. Uh, but yes, had it been another patient who was probably more compliant or more understanding, I think uh, OPD um, uh, follow-up is also permissible at the same time i don't even know the status of the uh, fetus uh, whether the growth was okay or not uh, though the um, gestational though the uh, fundal height and uh, the symphysofundal height and grips have been telling that the, the the baby is growing as per the gestational age but at the same time there are many other uh, things that uh, need to be checked with in ultrasound and uh, I'd like to follow her up, uh, the baby and the fetus and the growth and everything. Plus, what is her current uh, status as far as uh, GDM is concerned? Of if there is any other organ which is being involved, is there any effect, ill effect on the fetus which has just started to happen? So I definitely would like to admit her and then monitor. Okay, doctor. And what investigations would you like to send? So I would like to divide the investigations in part of... Uh, uh, the, the regular antenatal investigations which I would want to see, investigations specific to diabetes which I would want to see and specific investigations for the fetus. So the first thing is the regular investigations like the blood group, the CVC, urine routine microscopy, her thyroid profile, her liver pro profile, certain specific investigations for diabetes that I would want to see. I would want to see uh, one dipsy I would want, want want to do that is a challenge test that does not depend on what she's been sure she's eaten or not so I'll give her 75 grams of glucose and I would like to see her blood sugar immediately uh, maybe one hour after that and would want to see whether how she's doing since she's an admitted patient I can also check her glucose two hours later to just have two uh, readings of glucose and to understand her uh, uh, sugar profile better her HbA1c I would like to send also her uh, kidney uh, function test I would want to see and uh, obviously her viral markers uh, which are part of uh, basic antenatal investigations. As far as the baby is concerned I would want to take her uh, CTG that is an NSTR a non-stress test uh, on, on admission and I would send the baby uh, for an ultrasound uh, fetal well-being along with Doppler force. Okay. And uh, how will you chart the sugars and how would you control the sugars, doctor? Can you tell me this? So she is an admitted patient. I would like to go in for a seven sample profile. I would like to get her first fasting sample done and then uh, post breakfast, pre-lunch, post-lunch, pre-dinner and post-dinner. Uh, sugars in one uh, sugar, preferably uh, somewhere in between like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. sugar uh, to see how, whether she's maintaining or is there any dip in sugar uh, uh, during the night hours and uh, um, uh, if this patient uh, first of all I'd like to see whether she is getting controlled on giving her a, a dose of uh, oral hypoglycemic agents just in case she's not responding or the sugars are not okay uh, as she was giving a history of having insulin in the previous pregnancy so I would uh, uh, probably like to switch over uh, maybe in uh, uh, maximum in a week's time uh, I'd like to uh, Obviously, I not, not would, uh, wouldn't want to continue uh, admitting her for, uh, for a week, but maybe in three to four days, things will be pretty clear. And still, if uh, it's not okay, then I'd like to switch over to insulin. So that will be my um, plan of action for her. All right, doctor. Uh, I'd just like to know here, a uh, lot of people, you know, come up and tell us, ki, can we buy a machine and, you know, can we monitor it at home? Or would you suggest that, you know, the patient specifically, uh, you know, takes a lab test properly? Uh, yes, this, uh, uh, she, this what we're doing is at home, the sugar monitoring is basically the capillary blood sugar, which is not that sensitive as the <clears throat> venous blood sample. 
so i would want her to uh, get definitely venous blood sample which is far more uh, sensitive as compared to capillary blood sugar but this is more easy and more available at home so blood sugar monitoring can be done at home with the uh, machines which are available for patients who are intelligent and cooperative and compliant and are ready to follow up because time and again in between we can always do the venous sugar sampling but at home for sugar sampling this is a decent method and that can be allowed that's good so uh, <clears throat> how would you uh, how will you monitor the baby uh, 